Did Sigmund Freud actually diagnose Hitler? Now, let's dive into the controversy surrounding this theory and the lack of concrete evidence. The idea that Freud diagnosed Hitler is a topic that has sparked heated debates among historians and psychologists. While some believe that Freud did indeed diagnose Hitler, others argue that there is no solid proof to support this claim. A consultation that could have changed the course of history involved Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis with Adolf Hitler on his couch. This is the story that connects Freud with a six-year-old Hitler. The little dictator was a child tormented by night terrors. He suffered from constant and distressing nightmares in which various monsters chased him, punishing him to the point of wishing for death, or he sometimes dreamed of falling into the void. These nightmares made him think even about his desire to die from an early age and provoked, or were a reflection of, numerous inappropriate behaviors for a child of his age. In fact, in his adulthood, he threatened several times to take his own life, and there were many occasions when he suffered from nervous breakdowns. These episodes and other events led Hitler's family doctor at the time, Dr. Bloch, to conclude that his problem was psychological and that he needed the intervention of a specialist. Back then, psychology was in its infancy or practically non-existent in that place, but psychoanalysis had recently emerged and was beginning to gain prominence. Therefore, Dr. Bloch turned to the famous psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, who already had a successful practice attended by both the upper and middle classes of the time. We cannot be certain that the young Hitler literally lay on Freud's couch, nor can we be sure that they conversed or even saw each other face to face. What we know is that Dr. Bloch consulted Freud about Adolf Hitler's case on several occasions, possibly through letters or more in-depth conversations between them. But although Bloch's consultations with Freud were numerous and seemingly detailed, there is no evidence that the future dictator ever physically visited Freud's practice. In any case, Freud recommended that Hitler be taken to a child mental institution in Vienna, so he could be observed by professionals there. It is also known that he initially recommended a treatment, although we do not know the details of what it entailed. However, this never happened. Hitler was never treated or admitted, and this was because his father, Alois Hitler, flatly refused to let it happen, despite his mother Clara's pleas. The reason Alois refused was to prevent the intense history of abuse he inflicted on his son from being discovered. Indeed, the future dictator was subjected to constant physical abuse and humiliation by his father. On one occasion, as a child, he tried to escape from home by climbing out of the window naked, supposedly to make less noise. But unfortunately, he got stuck on the window and hung there in a ridiculous position. When his father discovered him, instead of helping him down, he called the whole family to come and laugh and mock him. Little Adolf cried for three days. In case you haven't guessed, it is more than likely that the night terrors and other problems Hitler exhibited in his childhood were due to the abuse inflicted on him by his father. Throughout his adult life, it is not known if he still suffered from such intense nightmares, but his nervous breakdowns were better documented. The first recorded instance was after he was twice rejected by the Vienna Academy of Art, something he never got over. In fact, he developed certain persecutory delusions at that time, feeling there was a conspiracy against him to prevent him from achieving his dreams. Naturally, psychoanalysis is one thing, and psychology and psychiatry are quite different. There are many differences, but the fundamental one is that psychoanalysis is based on case studies, but it does not rely on the scientific method or most of the procedures of health sciences, whereas psychology and psychiatry do. So, what was Hitler's real psychological profile? Psychiatrist Henry Murray was recruited by the CIA to analyze Hitler's mind during World War II and found some answers. His clinical profile showed neurosis, what we would now call a neurotic disorder, which is characterized by prolonged extreme anxiety and distress, as well as paranoia, persecutory mania, and some type of schizophrenic disorder. Schizophrenia, by the way, is an extremely complicated and broad term that can encompass different levels and particularities from one patient to another. In Hitler's case, the most notable aspects of his disorder were delusions of reference, grandiosity, and persecution. Murray made a personal assessment of his character, which stated, he is a vindictive and spiteful person, very intolerant of criticism, and tends to belittle people. What a surprise. Murray also determined that if he lost the war, Hitler would likely take his own life, which he did. 
Subsequent studies, such as the one by researcher Mariana Andrea Roselli from the Universidad Abierta Interamericana, described the dictator as having a psychopathic personality. What a surprise! Returning to the past, we do not know what psychoanalytic diagnosis Freud would have given Hitler, or rather, Freud or the specialists at the hospital where he recommended his admission. But it does raise a question, if he had been admitted and treated, would this have changed the course of history? Would World War II have been prevented? Personally, I think not. The conditions were perfect, and it would have taken just a few sparks to ignite. In fact, in other European countries, similar figures and movements had already emerged before Hitler's rise. So, if he had not done it, someone else probably would have. Not exactly the same things, of course. It would have been done differently, with different goals and different results, but without a doubt, something was going to happen, something that is almost entirely impossible to decipher. It is also worth asking, what happened to Freud and Bloch when Hitler grew up and came to power? Well, Freud, for his part, was quite naive and tried to remain neutral on the National Socialist issue, claiming that psychoanalysis was a school that had nothing to do with one political ideology or another. But that mattered little or not at all to the people on the other side of the table, namely, the Nazis, because Freud, after all, was Jewish, and all Jewish sciences, schools, or philosophies had to be eradicated. Although his family suffered greatly, Freud managed to escape persecution and left us with the famous quote, How far we have come, in the Middle Ages they would have burned me, now they are content with burning my books. Of course, this was only because he managed to escape in time. One might wonder if Hitler remembered Freud's intervention in his childhood or if he was even aware of how close he came to being admitted on Freud's recommendation. We don't know, but what we do know is that he was very aware that Dr. Bloch had tried to help him as a doctor. So much so that Bloch was the only famous Jew whom Hitler protected from his own persecution. In 1938, a Jewish doctor wrote directly to Hitler asking for protection, and it was the Fuhrer himself who ordered Martin Bormann to protect him. That doctor was none other than Dr. Bloch, who promptly obtained a safe conduct allowing him to escape to the United States with his family. Without a doubt, the dictator remembered the kind attentions of his childhood doctor. But did he know that he was almost admitted to a mental hospital on Freud's recommendation? Fortunately for Bloch, he did not. In any case, what do you think? Would these events have changed history? And if so, what do you think would have happened? Let me know in the comments section. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, a people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.